Okay, so here we are, this home. Uh, one thing I want to show you here is the sludge pump. Hopefully I don't need it today. Just use it if uh, you got a low spot in the driveway. You just drop that thing down there. Works amazing. Plug your uh, hose in there, your wand or whatever. And that thing it sucks out 10 times whatever size machine you're using. So with the eight gallon and pump 80 gallons a minute out for a low spot, it does a good job, gets the water down about a quarter of an inch. Don't think we're gonna have trouble, that trouble. You should see, here's the home, here's the driveway. First thing you wanna look for when you're coming out, the same thing when you're doing an estimate, make sure you kinda of look and see where the water flows. Now I'm not even gonna pre-treat this today. We've had about two inches of rain last night. Probably have about two inches of rain today. Um, you see here the water flows down across the drive here and you can see the low point over there uh, this drive is pretty dirty uh, i know i'm gonna have to post treat uh, but everything flows down across this way and so maybe up there uh, the homeowner owner had done the sidewalk oh, about six months ago right there in front of the step i'm going to redo that so we can post treat it um, because it's been soaking overnight, we had about an inch and a half of rain out here. Uh, this is gonna come up pretty easy. Some of the embedded stuff in there uh, be the reason we post treat. But you can see the slope in the driveway there. So this is all the things when you come out and do an estimate or uh, you do a job, always kind of plan your water flow because this is gonna determine how you do your job. You always wanna stop, start at the high point and uh, let the water, dirty water run down where you haven't done yet. Now, the only exception to that, if you do have a place where the water is going to pool, so if I knew it was going to pool over there next to where the, see where the water is running across, that's another thing you see. Sometimes when you're pre-treating, see which way the water flows. And it's no big deal if your pre-treatment dries, you're still getting some water in there, loosen it up and get some soap on there. But that's what I'm saying. If I knew that place was going to pool up real bad, I might do that area first because sometimes once the water gets an inch or two deep it's real hard to get your surface cleaner to uh, do anything until you get it pumped out or squeegee it out or shot out of there. Uh, you see a little bit of break in the driveway here so probably what I'm going to do is come down here uh, start up here at the street work down here and uh, we're not going to do this back part back here. We're going to stop right here at this line. And uh, most of these homes out here, because it's hilly, have an underneath garage also. But we're not going to do this part here. We're going to stop right here. So Anyway, get my water hose hooked up, and uh, we'll get going. Normally, I would already put my water up. But since I'm shooting this video, usually that's the first thing I do. You know, actually a lot of times I'll carry the hose with me as I'm walking up the front door to say hello. And uh, notice I just got my, uh, just went to from five eighths to three quarter inch flexilla. This is an 18 inch Titan reel. 200 feet's all you can get on here. I'm not sure I can get another 25 feet. I carry another 100 feet in the truck of the 5 eighths I had on here. All the rest of it got getting relegated. Slowly but surely, I'm uh, converting all my at-home hoses to it. So I'm going to go over here and find the water. I think it's right here on the front of the house. the other day I'm trying to figure the best way to run this keep it out of my way uh, I think I'll run around this way and the reason why so I'm cleaning this if it's just running across one place in the driveway not so bad but here I'm gonna be going in and out so I'm gonna run around over here right these rose bushes and then I'll have less to deal with later.
they what the three quarter inch you can definitely I don't know whether that or I'm just well, I've been using it a couple of days but you can and whether I've been lucky to have homes with uh, pretty good water flow but I can definitely tell a difference one thing uh, one thing too I always when you leave at the end of a job just thinking about it always hook the owner's hose up and you use the unscrew to put yours in. Always turn around and screw theirs back in. Leave things like you left them. Always run the water for a minute. There's no bugs, lizards, snakes, whatever in there. Okay, so the water's running here. Yeah, notice I'm gonna, I parked off the curb here. The reason why we're going to do this curb here too. And uh, they're pretty bad in all the neighborhood, in the whole neighborhood here. So I'm going to do that. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that later. Now, notice where I'm pulling my hose. I'm going ahead and pulling it around this bed because I'm going to be working back and forth. pull out my hose, make sure I got enough to reach everywhere. Cause you don't want to have to do it, go down that way, then come back with your surface cleaner. So I'll pull it out here. I've got on my GoPro here, uh, got one of these adapters that hooks it to your hat brim. And uh, like I said, who knows what y'all are looking at here. Notice I never drag my ball valve anywhere. So I'm gonna come around over here. I think I've got enough to pull it off to get to the end of the drive. Maybe I might pull a little bit more here. And then I'll lock my reel in. I'm not using hot water, so I'm not worried about laying it in the grass. Pull off about 130 or 40 feet. This driveway is about 4,500 square feet, plus the curbing. So, full of gas. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna move this stuff here. Sorry, I want to talk to you about technique. Typically, I'm going to do right here, down to there, and then we'll come back at the rest of the curve later because it's going to flow on down the street. Normally, and I see people do this all the time, they'll make one long pass all the way down the end, come back, and guys, that's nice, but especially on a hot summer day when it's drying quick, what you're doing, if you don't rinse often enough when you're doing a drive, is that you're getting uh, all the dirty water that you're washing dries back into the concrete. So when you rinse, uh, it's almost like starting over again. So typically I'll do like, oh, 15, 20 minute sec sections. So I'll look here like I'll probably do these first two or probably down to that seam right there. So one, two, three sections. What I like to do is go down each side. And guys, this is a trick if you don't post treat uh, one of my early mentors taught me this. Always go perpendicular to the line of sight. Uh, even if you do post treat, I try to do that as much as possible because they drive up. 
you know, even if you do a nice job, you're still going to see some lines from the surface cleaner. And you don't want long, wavy lines going down through the driveway. If you do it perpendicular to the drive, uh, it breaks it up. You don't see it once it dries. You truly just don't see it nearly as bad. So just a little trick. Yeah, it takes a little bit more time, but there again, it's the reason you charge more. Uh, you know, don't be the $99 guy. So like I said, do it right. Um, like I said, usually what I'll do is cut the edges in, get those out of the way, and I'll show you here in a minute. And then I'll go horizontal, line of sight. Now certain areas, like I said, it's hard to do, but uh, wherever that line of vision, so I'll probably do most of my work and I'll go back and forth, even though I am going post street. Just kind of getting the habit of doing it really doesn't take that much longer. But I see guys all the time, they'll post video and they'll make the all the way here. Hell, they'll go all the way down to the bottom and then turn around and come back. Yeah, it's a little bit quicker. And then the problem is they won't rinse until they get the whole section. So an hour later they go to rinse, all that stuff's dried into the concrete again. And yeah, most of it rinses off, but not all of it. So I always go perpendicular to the line of sight. Just get in the habit of doing that. Uh, yeah, now if I know I'm gonna put a real heavy post tree, do I do it all the time or if it's a real short driveway? Um, no, but uh, if you can, you know, people are paying you good money for it, do it right. So we're gonna get hooked up here. Let's crank up the machine and get going. Notice how I let my skirt ride on the two high spots. Yeah, so you're maybe four or five inches away from it in the middle. But what you're doing is protecting your nozzle. You don't want to there and then the front piece of the edge of the pavement or something like that hits your spray bar. So, now another thing you want to think about too is always one of the big things on circuit play is hose management. So, I'm probably going to keep that down there. Uh, you know, later I might pull a hose to the right side of the driveway to get started here. I want to see what's going on. Alright, All right, you slow. And I'm putting out uh, 8 point, well, 200 feet of hose. Still getting up over eight and a half. About eight gallons of man flow here. Direction. Plus, this is telling me where the water is flowing. Yeah. 
nose now. Always turn into your hose. Do that way and just take my hand back over here. Nice and easy up the edge here. Close. I've over it twice. I've actually found out it's quicker though. I take it a little bit slower. Take one pass. Sometimes it, you know you'll make it make two, two vertical passes. You got standing in a saw or something like that. See, because I'm turning into my hose here, I haven't had to touch the hose yet. Find out doing surface cleaning, hose management is one of your biggest pain in the butt. The driveway is coming really clean. I like just been soaking in rain pretty much all night. Same thing, baby, like soaking your dishes overnight. First time I had to touch my hose. Now once I get down there, it'll be behind. It'll be behind me. If I wanted to, I could just go back. Right now I'm far enough along, I'll switch it over. It'll be behind me now. Notice I'm turning the other way here now. Keep the hose behind me.
well because it's pretty wet this morning and damp uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do one more section before I rinse it's only been about five or ten minutes Getting down into the grass, and I'm leaving myself some room here. That's how easy this is cleaning up. I said I'm pushing almost. Over about eight and a half gallons a minute. I'm losing some flow because of the hose. Uh, run it 25025 tip. Four bar, four nozzle bar. It's 24 inch cleaner. Another thing, I'm getting ready to rinse. Guys, don't just lay your machine down. If you lay it down this way and you're rinsing, you're gonna blow dirty water and crap into your uh, intake here. So, okay, you're gonna be rinsing. I always like to uh, put it down where I had to. Make sure and put your uh, plug there pointing away from where you're gonna be rinsing. You only splash the dirty water in there.
fed cut me a little channel next to the sod where most of the water will run on them. Away. Now, see the difference? What I'll do after it dries, soak it a little bit, you come back and just hit it with a real white thing and wash that mud off of it. I'll go back over here and show you. Now you don't see the lines going down. Look at it. It's still wet. Once it dries, you won't see those lines you see going down the driveway. But like I said, a good little tip there. It's always off. So if you can, run perpendicular to your line of sight. Right, I'm going to stop here for a little bit, and I'll be back later. Okay, one other thing I want to show. See, when I was rinsing this, get a lot of crud down in the next sections, go ahead and pre-rinse it before you surface clean. One thing, you see all that dirt and stuff is I pushed on over there. Um, one thing is going to protect your surface cleaner a lot better. Not doing it. It's just easier going. I washed a lot of crap out of there. It took me less than a minute. Just go ahead and knock that on, push that on out of the way. The other thing, notice me using a whisper wash. Usually your hose comes in, loops up to the right, from the right. When you're trimming along the edges like this, and you got these some kind of flower or bush or something like that, always go with it to keep that hose away from it so it doesn't snag. If you try and come the other way, you're gonna have a long, hard battle. So uh, I always do it that way. And still, if they're hanging over really bad like this, it's gonna be a pain anyway. But still, if you try and go the other way, you're gonna be snagging and putting, picking up all kind of stuff. So I'll show you. One other thing, notice what I've done here, all the way down to here so far, I've literally touched my hose in one of those times, which is to pull some more slack the whole time. So like I said, hose management is crit critical for going quick. You know, if you're always fighting your hose, having to move it, twist around, so take a couple minutes on the front end and kind of get your hose positioned, uh, and then that way, you're not fighting it the whole time. So here's what I'm talking about with the plant. See that hose is staying pretty much out of the way where it's not snagging anything. for this area, most of it. that off for them. I always wash all the door mats, front one, side ones, any of them I run across to. The other thing I'll show you what I like about a uh, floater, a floater that you can't do with a wheel and watch this. Now, you see that little bit, there, well, it's in, in real bad. You see a little bit of stripe there through the spray bar line. What you do with a floater is See that 
plays it good enough that most of the time you don't have to come back and cut it in. If I was going along like this, watch what happens. On hose, these aren't too, too bad. What happens is that hose is just start catching plants, especially shipping. Like you always run down eggs on the far side of where your hose is coming. Okay, and my hose move one more time here, and that should be the last time I have to touch it for a section. Also, be careful too. A lot of times, where you lay your hose, you dug it through the bottom, always rinse back, and a lot of times, you'll get some dirt on the hose and it'll leave little marks. that channel will get hit the grass.
to get Freddy out. He's just drying quicker. John, how you doing? Doing all right. Good morning. Done all the section, actually do one extra se section for him down here. But see here what I'm talking about the stripes, and no matter how slow you go, you can see the little kind of striping in the driveway and everything. Now watch what happens when it dries though. A lot of guys take it. Let's look up here where it's dried. That dry completely, so we'll see. See what it dries. You won't see any lines at all. In fact, this driveway will be good enough that uh, probably when you even have to post trees, I'm going to hit it with a pretty light mix just to make sure to kill any build your algae because it's got some low lying spots. Uh, keep them coming back. It will brighten it up some. But you can see the difference in the lines. Once it dries out, 
but that way it's an optical illusion. People come in, and sometimes if you don't post treat or do it, clean it good enough, you'll still see some faint stripes going the way you turn it in. And uh, a lot of times, like I said, there's a couple reasons for it. Sometimes you don't rinse often enough, the stuff kind of redries back in there and stuff like that. So keep an eye, especially if you're using helpers, they'll take the easy way out. So they'll make you know, 10 long passes here instead of taking a few minutes and doing it right. So, like I said, I've uh, been in here about, uh, actually running about an hour and 20 minutes, and we're probably about 60% done here, which is about right on the schedule. Wow, I started getting ready to start. I didn't have much pressure. My surface cleaner, I looked back up here, the water spewing out of the trailer. I ran back up here, and this whip hose right here, and bust this is 6,000 psi whip hose. You see it ruptured right there. Uh, always carry a spare. Notice I can actually have the, another one from going from the four that I change out if I want to use it. Then I also have another one going to the heater. It runs back around there. If I'm using my heater, I plug it in and take this one and plug into that one or one or the other. So I've got three and no biggie, but I always have a spare. You know, the last thing you think is a two wire 6,000 psi. Uh, hose rupturing on you, especially some five or six foot length. So anyway, always carry a spare. So it, it'll be like a 30 second change here. Unplug it that one. Unplug it there. Yeah, come on, get off here. I ain't had this one off. Whoa. Brass, stupid brass feeding. Plug it in. Plug it in. Good to go. Okay, I want you to see how I deal with this water down here. I've worked my way down, I already cleaned it. Now I'm going to push it in towards that drain, where it's draining over there. So what I'll do is go out here. I actually use my surface cleaner to kind of direct it over in that direction. going over at the same time. Right back here, the water gets, you create a little dam of water. curb in a minute. I'll let that water drain for just a minute or so. Get it out of there. The ground's so saturated because we had so much rain last night. I cut a pretty good channel in there. So the sea is flowing, flowing pretty good down that way.
pass this down this way. up here and keep the joint low spot the better. I'll try and work as much as I can over that way anyway. I don't doing when I chase it down this outside edge with the edge I'm creating a place for the excess to go so if I run it out there and some of this little stuff will go over there eventually you can work it out of there pretty good same thing when I was here shooting back this way I was trying to knock some of the water that was standing right behind the lip of the concrete out of there to make room for some of the other So here we go, all done, except for the post treating. Looks pretty good for a 20 year old plus driveway.
Uh -oh. Still got some, got some, had some mud in it over the years. As you can see, it's down to the bare stone in places, but uh, doesn't look too bad. A lot different than it did. Let's see, I ever get most of this up here. We're in this low spot. Not too much trouble. All there. Nice breeze. We're supposed to get about six or seven inches of rain in the next few days, starting at night. Now, these curves were bare. Like I said, uh, I ain't hit them a whole lot. I think the post treatment, I'll post treat those and that'll take care of some of it, but they're in pretty bad shape. So, we shall see. Okay. I had to cut the water back on. That thing, that nine gallons a minute, almost nine gallons a minute, sucks it down, let it run for a minute. Okay. Water system, I got the little five and a half pump hooked up to it. What I'll do is get my mix right. Make sure my uh, SH valve is turned to SH. Cut the water all the way off for a second. Set my snot today about three and a half. I want to do a roof. Now I'll cut the SH all the way on for just a minute. Now to get it primed in just a second. Get the change there. There you can see it's already SH. Got soap in it. So now my mix. Right, I'll cut this back to about. I don't have to go real heavy. I'll go about two and a half on this one. One day it's a big drive. Get the water all the way on. Soap bump for just 30 seconds. I can usually tell by a machine when it starts to get up with some water. It's still pushing out water that was in the hose. Usually be a bubble in there. almost 300 feet of hose, so it takes a few minutes. Yeah, I can feel it. About, there's gonna be about 10 feet of almost straight bleach in there. So. Take it just like that. This goes quick. It'll take him probably 10 minutes to do this whole driveway. It'd be nice if it don't rain till the night. The sun bake on it a little bit. Yeah, here comes my soap bump. Let's do 
Park Service guys. Now I get down with grass, I'll cut in along the grass up here though. Pretty safe doing whatever. I can also use this kind of knock in. Like I said, this driveway is not real bad, so I'm just putting a white coat here. That's where it gets tricky here, where it runs over here. Of course, this ground's been so sad for right between the surface cleaner and all the rain we had last night. I think it's pretty safe. Walk right along the edge here. Do it to help brighten it up. Main reason to do though, you used to surface clean all the algae and stuff like that, but all you're doing is knocking it off the side, you're not killing it or anything. Just to kill it. The other thing that this helps is if you've got a plant, like a crepe myrtle or something, hangs over and drops stuff during the year. If you just go out and blow the leaves off about once a week, next time it rains, it usually wash that stain off of it for about a year or so. So homeowners really like that around here because a lot of them have crepe myrtles over their driveways, myself included. Heck, I hadn't treated my drive a couple of years and it's still stained still. Like I said, if I blow the leaves off, which I'm pretty good about doing, or the berries, like I said, uh, next time it rains, any stains are usually gone. get too close to these plant daylilies. Once you sell a homeowner on post-treating, the reason I like doing that is that sets you apart from, there again, the $99 guy. Once you sell them, you better be sure you get it everything because they'll be out here checking. Like I said, once you sell them on the idea, they, uh, they're sold on it. So don't, like I said, don't shortchange them. I wasn't even supposed to do that section down there, so I was extra, so I'm not going to... All this runs down there anyway.
Just aim, walk out on the grass, aim in. Then if it runs a little bit, you got a little leeway there. Yeah, dropping my rag. This driveway really didn't need it. Dries out good. It's gonna look nice anyway. Hopefully, like I said, it doesn't rain for a few hours after and let this stuff really soak in there and bleach have time to work. This driveway really whiten up, so I'm trying to stay away. I put the soap in there. I think it helps it penetrate. The other thing is kind of a marker for me too. I can see where I've done because soap will sit here for a half an hour after the leach dries up. Plus the homeowner likes homeowners homeowners like it. But it does, I feel like it helps penetrate. It actually holds it's not it actually holds it on there good. So it makes the beds and stuff I like to use. just enough stream on when you're doing this that then you do it too fine a little breeze come by and blow it all over the darn yard
breeze starts picking up, you gotta tighten up your stream. So it doesn't blow as much. Yeah, once you sell the people on uh, the post treatment, like I said they they're real interested. They like they buy into it as they should. It's gonna give them a better, longer job for just a couple cents more a square foot. Gonna put some permanence in the job and give them a lot better. You know, plus, it's safer. You know, people forget. Mildew slippery as heck when it gets wet. You got an older couple or somebody like that, got mildew on their steps and stuff. You know, you clean it and six months later they come out there and it's grown back and it's raining and they slip on it. So, like I said, anything we did to kind of retard the growth of it for a while. Like I said, I've slipped on heavy mildew, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Go back up here and do the... Uh, Okay, well, wrapped up. Change that back over to water. Soap off. 